Hello out there, all you nice folks in YouTube here. This is David Primack one with yet another lesson in basic Yiddish. This is lesson eight, I believe. And we've been doing a lot of plurals uh, for the past couple of weeks. It's time we went back to verbs for a bit because uh, I have not by any means said all there is to say about verbs, nor will I at the end of this lesson, but I'll have said a good deal more than I had previously. Now, in our last class about verbs, we talked about verbs that instead of, uh, that for the past tense, instead of using the, uh, the uh, usual auxiliary verb hub, ich hab given, du hast gesehen, ich hab geschritt, it means I was, I saw, uh, or you, you saw, I wrote. There are verbs that begin with the uh, with the auxiliary verb Zion to be, and I touched on that briefly. And uh, one thing I did not tell you then is that the uh, the uh, the ver the verbs that to put them in the past tense you have to use the auxiliary ver verb. Zine to be are all intransitive. That means you're not doing anything to anybody else. You're just doing it by yourself, like sleeping or walking, etc. And they all end with a nun prefix. Let me give you an example. First, let me once again conjugate the verb to be which is the auxiliary verb used for this group of uh, intransitive v verbs. Ich bin, I am, du bist, you are, er or sie, he or she is, just like in English, mir seinen or mir seinen, we are, ihr seint, y'all are, or you guys are, they seinen, or zenen. It means they are. Now that we've done that quick review, let's give you some examples of intransitive verbs that have a nun ending and a, uh, as, uh, and this auxiliary verb. For example, schlaf, to sleep. Bin ich geschlafen means I am asleep. I'm, I have I have slept. Bleib to remain. Du bist geblieben. You remain. Or, you, you, you remained. I'm sorry. It's hard to get used to thinking this way in English. Gay to go. Is er gegangen? He's gone. Hung, to hang. Zainan mir gehangen. We're all hanging. Or we all hung. Wax, to grow. Zainan dir gewachsen. You have grown. And then ver, which means to become. They seinen geworden. They became. Bin. Or just the actual auxiliary verb itself. Bin is to, is to be. Ich bin given. I was. Now I'm getting uh, into the rhythm of it. Sitz means to sit. Bin ich gesessen. I sat. Liegen, I lay, 
or rather I lied. This to Gilegan, you lied to me. Fall, I fell. This to Gifalan, you fell. This to Gifalan for my legion, and you fell for my lies. Far, which means to travel. I'm sorry, for is to travel. Far means for something. For to travel. Er is Giforin. He he traveled. Kum to come. Is the Gikumen. She has come. Spring to 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 jump. Zainen ge Zainen springen. They jumped. Now notice something here. The subject can be before or after the uh, the verb, the, the auxiliary verb. Really, you could do it uh, even after the main verb. That is, I can say ich bin. I could say bin ich. I could even combine them and say uh, bist du. You are. Let's see how it works. Seinen geworden sei, they became. Yes, that would work just as good. Seinen gewachsen ihr, yo, we grew big. Yes, that would work too, now that I think of it. And uh, you can do the same thing with an intransitive verb. It doesn't change just because you attach a uh, a prefix to a preposition as a prefix to it, which is done very often in both Yiddish and German, since they're related. Uh, farkum means to come over, uh, like to to come up, to come over here. Sein sein Fargekommen to be uh, the the the. They are. Uh, they have come up. Uphalten. To hold oneself back. Bin ich up gehalten. I held myself back. Then uh, there's by staying as opposed to just staying. Means to stand by, like. Is Hus Zolens Beistehen? May her merit uh, stand by us and, and guard us. And you could you could uh, you could make that in the in the past tense and say is Hus Ovis is Zolens Beigestanen that the uh, the merit of our forefathers stood by us and protected us. A reinfall, to fall in. Ich habe reingefallen. I, uh, I fell in. Whoops, did I do that? A reinfall means to fall in. Ich bin a reingefallen. My bad. Really, really bad. Contradicting my own lesson. Okay, I, uh, I, fell, I fell in. Now, we finally have the future tense. And there are other tenses after that, which I'll, I hope I'll be able to cover tonight. Now, the future tense has a different auxiliary verb. It's, uh, usually that's vel, which means I will. And to conjugate it quickly, ich will, I will, du vest, you will, er or sie vet, he or she will, mi vet, we will. It doesn't end with a nun ending there, unlike most verbs, but with a tes ending. Ihr wollt, you will, they wollen, uh, they will. For example, ich will kaufen a chala for Shabbos. I'll, I'll buy a chala for Shabbos. 
And uh, the same thing goes with Duvest Kuifen. Duvest Kuifen wine for Shabbos. You you buy uh, wine for Shabbos. Er or Z vet zogin legan. She'll tell lies. Uh, he'll tell lies. Mivet mavek avek lifen will run away. Uh, irvelent gekaifen. Uh, an irrelevant coffin you will uh, you will buy they will an essen they will eat there i gave enough examples of that but this is not the only auxiliary verb you can use for the future for example you can say so which means should Zolantir of Eklaifen, while coming to Cossacks. You should run away because the Cossacks are coming. Uh, or you can say, Muz, Muzich, uh, Muzich Lernen. I have to study. Or if you're talking about immediate action, something that's going to be done really fast, you can say, Ich gehe schlafen. I'm going to sleep. Or you can use will, which means it's very different than well. So you shouldn't uh, confuse it with, by mispronouncing, as uh, can happen uh, in some dialects. You should always very clearly say well or will. So ich will. Drink in a glass of tea. I would like to drink a, uh, a glass of tea. Now the main verb that these auxiliary verbs modify is always in the infinitive. And uh, that's in a nutshell future. Now there is another couple of tenses there that I'm going to tell you about tonight. First is the pluperfect past, and uh, I was surprised to find that there was such a thing as pluperfect in Yiddish. It's rare. I never, uh, I never encountered it. I'm sure, but you study and you learn things. So anyway, there's pluperfect past. So what is pluperfect? I encountered it in ancient Greek when I was studying that, and. It basically means an action that is uh, so far in the past that in the past it already occurred. It's like more than just perfect, more than just in the past. It's in the past past. So let me uh, give you one, uh, a couple of examples of that. Ich habe euch gewarnt, ihr sollt nicht gehen dorten. I, I warned you not to go there, that you should not go there. That is, the warning itself was in the past. Das haben sie uns gehat geheißen früher. They told us to, uh, they told us to do this before. They, they ordered us to do this before. Demselben film hab ich gesehen früher. I saw that very same film before. But it's more than just in the past. It's way, way in the past. It was already done in the past. Uh, ancient Greek, they have more tenses than that. They have the aorist, the present imperfect, etc. And also the present perfect. Luckily, we're not learning ancient Greek. We're learning Yiddish, and like I say, Yiddish speakers are not sticklers with the rules of grammar so much. But there is also a pluperfect future. A pluperfect future refers to an action that will have been completed at a future time, but it'll be completely done. 
Like, let's take those sentences that I gave you for blue perfect past and change them a little bit. Dan velechabinaich givorent, yezont nisht geyendorten. Well, then I will have warned you not to go there. Or, dost zolen zeyuns haben geheisen freer. They should have told. Uh, they should have told us to do the uh, not. Uh, they should have told us this before. That is, they should have already told us that, but they didn't. Instead, uh, it's something they should have done in the future. Demselben film, velechobin gizen freer. The same film I would have seen in the future. I mean, I mean, I mean, I would have seen uh, demselben film hobbich, demselben film velechobin gizen freer. I would have seen the same film before. It's like uh, speculative more uh, more than uh, the past. The past is something that's already happened, done, and finished with. And I'm telling you now that it is done and finished with, and you did it, and it's uh, and that uh, was before. The future, it's more like speculating, like some smart alecky kids might say to you, was wird sein Eubmann geht dort? What would you? What would be? If we went there, then you say, "Dan velechaben ir gevorent is all nist gain dorten." Then I will have already warned you not to go there, because he's warning them now. Okay, now a proverb of some sort. Let me think. The blue perfect is pretty darn confusing, even now. I completely forgot it existed. Or almost completely. I knew there was such a thing, but I didn't know it was uh, going to be staring me in the face today in the lesson. Okay, so. Let me think. Proverb, proverb, proverb. What is the proverb? Let me put it on pause so you can't uh, hear me uh, agonizing over what to finish this with. Here's a slightly anti-Semitic proverb, okay? Ayida Kaiser, a butza Greiser. Means a Jew who becomes the Kaiser becomes a big prick. Now I gotta plug my product. Okay, folks. A picture of a great Sadiq. Rabbi Nachman of Breslov says, is a guard against the uh, urgings of one's Yetzir Hara, that's the evil inclination. Now, aside from that, this is a very lovely picture. It has won awards in the United States, and it's done by a dear friend of ours, the artist Laura Deckelman, who uh, lives in... Uh, in uh, New York City, and there is a ferry there in Far Rockaway named after her. And uh, if you contact me by email in Israel, I can uh, print out and uh, send to you a uh, high definition copy of this painting in, on any surface. On, in any, with any material in any size that you desire. The actual size of the original painting is one square meter, or about 36 by 36 inches. And uh, if you live in the United States, I can discreetly put you in touch with Mrs. Deckelman. And uh, I will leave my email for that purpose at the bottom of this uh, this YouTube video, and hopefully soon we'll have a website up for this uh, for the marketing of this and other paintings.
by Laura Deckelman. But this is the one that we have in what's called a gicle print. That means it's a French method of scanning, which is very high definition and uh, yields very high quality prints like the one you see here. Thank you and good evening. And hopefully next week I'll have more subtitles out and I'll get this video out earlier. Unfortunately, it's been another hectic day. I mean, I had another hectic week, although I did manage to get out uh, a song last, last night, uh, You Are My Sunshine in Yiddish, which you can find on this channel. Thank you. God bless you all and good night.